Hello, grade six. Welcome to our home based learning lesson six for grade six IS. Good to see you again. We're getting closer to the end of our our sessions on video call and we'll be beginning our project soon. I know you're looking forward to that. I am. That means I don't have to make so many of these. But um, for the first thing for today, I would like for you to take some time to quickly in your notes write down the name of Julius's friend. That was terrible, right? There's somebody who was a bad friend to Julius Caesar. Then I want you to write down who succeeded Julius Caesar. That would have been right at the very end. And then from the work that we did before these videos started, from some of the videos that we did before, um, some of them now, name five inventions from ancient Rome. You'll have to work your knowledge a little bit there. And then uh, pause the video, and I'll explain. Okay. Who was Julius's terrible friend? Do you remember? His name is Brutus, the brutal friend who's turned on his friend Julius, helping assassinate him. I think he was stabbed 23 times. It was not a lovely ordeal at all. But we, uh, we can learn from that. Never name your son Brutus, right? And never... Never have become a dictator, basically. Uh, who succeeded Julius? Well, his nephew, whose name was Octavian. Octavian is one we're going to focus on today, probably the most popular of all the Roman emperors from history. Um, name five inventions, and there's a long list. I hope you'll check them with each other after. I'm not going to get into the inventions. Okay, review time's over. Here we go, Octavian, from the year 44 BC to 14 AD. You gotta put that in that timeline of yours. Okay, he gained power at the age of 18. Why? Because um, Julius Caesar died. Power was handed down to him. The plan was for him to take over from Julius whenever that happened. There's a friend, his name was Mark Anthony. Okay, two first names, kinda nice. Makes it easier on people, you know. Um, Mark Anthony also ruled with him. So basically, Mark Anthony was young, or Mark Anthony was the helper to the young ruler, Octavian. They worked together. They established control over the government. Civil war was still kind of going on, and they punished the attackers. So Brutus, the Senate, all of them, they fled to the city of Philippi. Okay, we learn about that through other texts that we studied. And they had a battle there. They defeated them. And so Mark Anthony and Octavian become the rulers of and hold the absolute power of Rome. <clears throat> oh, there. You ever have it when you just got to get a burp out? And so they are in control of Rome. Rome is ginormous at the time. And so they share absolute power. The way to do that is Octavian controlled what was typically Rome, the western part and the eastern part, Egypt, um, in, into Asia, was given to Mark Anthony. Now, they did that for 10 years. That's a long time to be working together, you know, have a little bit of bond. Anthony and his wife, Cleopatra, the queen of um, Egypt, you can look them up. I don't suggest it until you're a little bit older. Um, they are, they're ruling together. They come up with this plan. Why is Octavian in charge and not us? And so they conspire against him. And so through the Senate, our friend Octavian, convinces the Senate to go to war against Octavian. They have a big battle at Atticum. Octavian and Cleopatra are defeated. They flee back to Egypt. By the time Octavian shows up to finish off the war against them, the civil war, um, they have already committed suicide and the battle is won. Octavian is in full power of Rome in the year 27 BC and was renamed to Augustus. And so you might know that we have in our calendar August as the month in which it's really hot. But that is actually named after Caesar Augustus, after he was renamed from Octavian. And why this is important is most of the calendar's names are derived from Greek or uh, Roman gods, so that the months were after the gods of that time. And so during this time, he became the first emperor of Rome. As his power and influence grew, people began the practice of emperor worship, making him out to be a god. He couldn't die, those kinds of things. And so they worshipped their ruler. Kind of sounds like North Korea, if you ask me. But he's the first emperor of Rome, and he's sharing his power, or he's not sharing his power. He's in charge. 
And then um, what we need to know is Pax Romana. Put that in your notes. The year 27 BC, after he took control by himself to 180. Most of the world at the time was under the rule of the Romans. And under this new rule, there's a lot of laws. There's a lot of things going on. And we see Pax Romana, Roman peace, influencing everything. And it begins this era of stability. Right, we learned about golden ages. This is the golden age of ancient Rome, the time when Jesus was born. You could travel from place to place safely. There'd be rules, there's laws. Your citizenship meant something. You had the, you had rights in the courts. You could, um, you could have enough money to do what you wanted. Those kinds of things. There wasn't so much of an economic, um, or social class. It was, it was pretty available for you to move up and down. And so we see um, through this Pax Romana a chance for someone like Jesus who came to this world and was walking around spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ to the world and his missionaries like Paul and the others. And it really wouldn't have been able to happen if it wasn't for this Pax Romana. And so the story of, of Augustus is really that he established a firm control, became the first emperor, and then established this Roman peace, that there is stability through strength, right? A strong army, no wars, people aren't battling you, and the opportunity to buy things that you don't need. And and that is the golden age. That is Pax Romana. So what happened? Okay, they built roads, they built um, temples, they be, built aqueducts, all these things. Rome is developing fast. There's even um, notes of people who lived during ancient Rome who had designs for helicopters and other things that we now enjoy today. They're well advanced. Maybe some clocks and things like that already being invented. And so uh, with this, they established roads. People were in charge. Guards were in charge of protecting roads. There's legions all over the place establishing a Roman presence. And so um, it really dampened um, things like bandits along the roads. You could travel to and fro easily. Um, they did a lot of work of trying to get rid of pirates at the sea and um, establishing free and easy trade routes. They were part of, um, they were the ones trading with China. So we see the Silk Road in, in full swing during this time. And so people started worshiping the emperor because he's giving them the things that they want, prosperity, right? They want children. They're encouraged to have kids, a lot of kids at this time. Um, to live simplest, simplicity, but like we learned from ancient Greece, a lot of their religions were based on um, fertility. We need enough kids to work the land. We need enough land. We need enough um, food every day. So we worship gods that will give us those things. And he became that. And so they worshiped him. Um, then Tiberius, okay, after Julius Caesar died, Tiberius stepped in and he ruled for actually a pretty long time however he was not a very good strong leader for direction for growing the country for establishing rule and reign and so during this time uh rome was still strong i would say but they were weakening and it wasn't something that could be maintained for a long time and so um he often was in it to be king for himself something was too hard he wouldn't do it those kinds of things he was the ruler during the time of Jesus Christ, and so we have reference to that in the Bible. That's how historians know that, um, and so, and through other ways. The uh, maintained through strong leadership. Oh. But he was also, after him, there came a time where there's a whole bunch of, like, after Julius Caesar, there's a whole bunch of emperors who were pretty bad. Some good, um, some that did what was um appropriate for governments to do at the time to establish for such a large country i think they didn't even have cell phones and, and ways of sending emails they, everything was carried by messages everything was through the order of roman ways of doing it. so over the next 450 years there's over 70 different roman rulers so your assignment from last week was to find the coolest one give me seven reasons well there are some nut jobs in ancient rome and so um, there's this guy named Caligula. There's actually a hockey player whose name is this. Caligula was a madman. He, he was so worried about people taking his job, um, wanting to kill him, wanting his power. So he, he killed 
nobody really knew, but lots of people. He killed his sister. Um, he made his favorite horse a senator, and uh, just there's lots of stories surrounding what he would do with his horse. He just loved his horse. Then there was crazy Nero. He was um, said to be playing the violin as he burned down Rome. And then blames it on the Christians. We also have record of Paul, the apostle, who was on a missionary journey, locked up in Rome. He talked to Nero, and so some people claim that he burned it and blamed it on the Christians because of a conversation he had with Paul. I don't know. I have to do a lot more research into those claims. But he was probably the most wicked one we can, or evil one we can think of from that time. He murdered his mom, his wife, all because he thought they were going to steal his power. Um, there's not all bad. You can see that Hydranian strengthened the borders and built the famous Hydranian wall in Britain. You can still go see that wall in England. Um, my my Oma, my grandma, grew up in the Netherlands during World War II, and they hid Jewish um, Jewish kids and families, and also were part of the underground and processing pilots to go through. And she, when she returns back to the Netherlands to the house that she grew up in after immigrating to Canada. It's her house that she was living in during World War II is now a museum because of what her family did during World War II. But they were also doing work on the road in front of her house and they digging it up and they found all these ancient Roman artifacts. And so they figured that this road was actually built by the Romans law in the 400s. And so um, that's part of her house now, the museum. So there's these these different rulers that actually did things as emperors however it left that republic that was so effective in establishing a rule and a law and a justice and, and a foundation for a strong country um, so what did the Romans leave us well they left us Roman laws a lot of which we still have they left us things like promise provinces if you're in government there's this idea of veto this someone who has a veto power they can say no this isn't going to happen um, a lot of the trade routes, laws for trade, things that happened through trade happened because of Roman laws. We see them, they have law schools, they teach, they gave us the Latin language, right, which most of our laws and different things are spoken or written in Latin. If you want to understand the law of the United States or other places, you need, really need to know Latin or have a really good translator. Huh. From the Latin language came French, Spain, Italian, all, they're called Romantic languages, um, very exact. They still use them to study written laws, and um, Latin is still spoken in the Roman Catholic Church circles. And so um, there's a Roman Catholic Church in the town I grew up in, and they still have all their services in Latin, which doesn't really make any sense to me if nobody understands it. So... Uh, but then there's another Catholic church. I've never been to it, but they do it in English. Um, I'd have to maybe check that out sometime. Not that I, I don't usually go to Catholic church. Um, they also left us incredible things having to do with engineering. And I'm almost out of time. Okay. Engineering and arch architecture. They have concrete that's stronger than most concrete we can make today. Somehow they did it. Aqueducts. They're delivering water all these places. Roads. Built them strong enough to last even today. Um, city organization, the streets. I know you don't. We don't have it in Indonesia where there's in grids, but if you go to the west and other places, you can find Fifth Street, and it will be three streets over from Eighth Street, and there will be a grid, and you can find wherever you need to go based off of this. Fitness building, bathhouses. They gave, they had things like um, bread supplies for those who are poor, sculptures, coliseums. Now the coliseums didn't really have great things like gladiators and. But we see things now, sports stadiums, amphitheaters. Um, they gave us ideas of free entertainment, Navy battles, gladiators, newspapers first started there, chariot races, watch Ben-Hur. I can't remember what it is, but I know it's chariot racing. Um, and that's what we're going to get to today. I hope you enjoyed. Video time is about to expire, so I will see you soon. Be sure to upload your tasks for home-based learning, session six.